Before we get started tonight, uh, Mr. Ball, our mayor, will stop be, be, be here tonight. He broke his ankle. He had to go back to the doctor today. And he was, we hope everything's okay, but uh, he's sorry he won't be here tonight. Okay. With approval of men for the last, oh, well, we all got to have the roll call. I'm sorry. Roll call. Mayor Connie Ball. Vice Mayor Bill Costner. Here. Vice Alderman John Dunn. Here. Alderman Freddie Gray. Here. Alderman Kathy Hope. Here. Alderman Kim Morgan. Here. City Attorney Terry Hurst. Here. Chief Administrator Scott Collins. Here. Okay, the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, if there's no corrections, I'd like to go ahead and make a motion with I have uh, approved the minutes for a regular session of March 8th and a special call meeting March 21st. I have a motion. I make a motion. I'll second it. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All in favor say no. Number four. A proclamation and recognition for citizens of citizens by the mayor. Uh, we got one tonight, a proclamation for Brandon Jacob Miracle. I'm going to have uh, Mr. Morgan read it for him. Is he here? Yes, sir. There he is. Okay, come up. Whereas Brandon Jacob Miracle, Boy Scout Proof 298, has completed the rank of Eagle and the Eagle Scout, and whereas. Brandon Jacob Michael's Boy Scout career begins in 1999 and he became a Tiger Cub, a division within the Cub Scouts. Brandon Jacob Miracle was an active participant in Cub Scout Pack 298. Brandon Jacob Miracle was awarded the Arrow Flight, which is the highest claim earned by a Cub Scout. And whereas Brandon Jacob Miracle crossed over to Boy Scout Troop 298 in 2003 and began earning his Eagle rank. Along the way, Brandon Jacob Miracle earned 24 merit badges. He also inducted into the Order of the Arrow and Honor Society of Women Boy Scouts. And whereas, for his Eagle Scout project, Brandon Jacob Miracle designed, managed, and personally worked on his Eagle Service project to benefit the Red Basket in Newport, Tennessee. The project provided newly designed and built storage for non perishable foods. Brandon Jacob Miracle successfully completed his Eagle Board of Review on February 8, 2011, and was awarded the rank of Eagle. And therefore, in order to pay tribute to Brandon Jacob Miracle, I, in order to do the work on the golf, do hereby proclaim April 12, 2011, as Brandon Jacob Miracle Day. I command all important citizens to recognize him and support him. And we can swear all right every time to do it. City Council for allowing the Cock County High School softball team to have a roadblock a couple of weeks ago or, and, and to raise money. And I'd like to inform the uh, board that part of that money, of course, goes to providing the girls uniforms. Last night, uh, we were able to do our uh, pink out night. We, each girl had a pink uniform with their number on it. Uh, during that game, all the admission to the game, to the, to the girls' game last night and the boys' baseball game, uh, is going to be donated to the uh, breast cancer research that, that goes on across the country. And I, I would just like to thank the board for allowing us to have that little block and to use that money in that direction. Very well. Thank you. Okay, number five is communication from the city administrator. Report from Scott Collins. I thought that was you. Mr. Collins. Uh, Mayor and board, uh, we have uh, all the reports from the various departments located inside your packet. 
of course, finance report is in the back of the book. I uh, have about four additional issues to bring you up to date on. With the board's permission, I'd like to ask the mayor to suspend the rules and add uh, the awarding of the bid for the Riverwalk project to tonight's agenda. We were notified on Friday that TDOT has approved this project to move forward. And the next step needs to be for the Board of Mayor and Alderman to approve the bid based on TDOT's recommendation. And then within two weeks, we'll have a pre-construction meeting and then proceed with construction. So with your day. We'll have a motion. We'll have a motion to spin the rules. I'll make that motion. I have a second. I'll say. Okay. Okay, we'll have a motion now to Rockwell Construction. Rockwell Construction for the River Rock Walk project. And the roll call vote the that's money involved. We need to we're, we're, we're voting to suspend the rules to add that to the agenda on the bid on the bid process. Yeah. And, and which Rock will you come up on later in the meeting. Yes, first of all, if we're just suspending the rules to add that to the agenda, correct? Right. Yeah. So you want that come up in later? Yeah. No, we, we need to vote right now. I'll vote for that. Yes, yes. I think it's good. Okay. Vote to spend the rules. Okay. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. So we're going to bring that to the agenda. Okay. Okay. Uh, also, sir, uh, as you all are aware, the census numbers have been reported and Newport, for whatever reason, has dropped 297 in the population, which will have an adverse impact on the per capita money we get from the state. So again, with the board's permission, I have made a tentative contact with the U.S. Census Bureau, and we can appeal for a recount. And the appeal period starts on June 1st of this year and continues through uh, June 30th of 2013. And I'd like to ask permission to have this placed on the agenda to proceed with the uh, request for a recount. The, uh, another uh, announcement I'd like to share with Mayor and Council, uh, Showcase on the River has uh, been scheduled previously with the Board of Mayor and Alderman. However, there's been a minor adjustment. Uh, Clark County football team kicks off their season this year in what is called Week Zero. So they'll be having a game on August 19th. With that in mind, the uh, Showcase Committee has determined it would be good to start uh, the event on Thursday night with a pep rally for the high school complete with a bonfire then follow that up with a tribute to Coach Larry Williams and doing luminaries down the Pigeon River. Then we go support the Big Red on Friday night and then come back on Saturday morning. We'll have the full day of activity starting from 10 o'clock and going until 6. Jimbo Whaley in Greenbrier has been contracted to be our uh, headliner for the night. He's uh, got a great following, recently did a show in Pigeon Forge, uh, sold out 1,600 uh, seats. So we're looking forward to that. And then on Sunday, August 21st, will be God, Family, and Country Day, where we're going to pay tribute to veterans, have a lot of great gospel music, and just a good family day. There'll be a lot more information coming up on this, but as things are beginning to move forward, I'd like to keep you all updated. Mr. Mayor, that's all I have for right now. Okay. Do we need a motion on that to approve all this, what you just said? No, sir. Okay. No, sir. Thank you. Thank you. i got one thing that comes these reports. Can we put these on the workshop to discuss some things on them? Is that okay? okay. Yes. Okay. Just make note of that in the workshop. Okay, number six, appointments of boards, commissions, and committees. I have consideration of appointment of the Port Utilities Board members. I have a motion to uh, six names. We have Mike Prophet, Philip Craig, Charles Benson Jr., Keith Fine, Bill Costner, and Jane Myers. 
I have a motion. Vice Mayor, I want to nominate Mike Proffitt, Charles Benson Jr., and Jane Myers. Anybody else? Great. Any second? Any second? Any second? Okay, a roll call. You don't need a second. You don't need a second. Okay, I'm going to nominate you. Okay. Alderman John Bay? No. Yes. Oh, what? No, no, please vote. Come on, you vote for Yes. No, I'm sorry. I'm not paying attention. Mike Crawford. Vice Mayor Will Costner. Charlie Benson. Alderman Phil Gray. Mike Crawford. Alderman Kathy Howard. Charles Benson. Alderman Kenny Morgan. Charles Benson. Charles Benson has three votes. Mike Crawford, two. Mr. Benson, you like to say thank you, I'm most of here. Everybody say that's Mr. Benson. I mean, he's so neat. Remember, he won't be good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Benson, you have a motion. Okay. Next is the Portland. I'm afraid of Greg because you need Port Calcane Economic Development. Uh, Mr. Ball has recommended Mr. Greg. He, that's his appointment to the the EDC, and that's, uh, we don't need to vote on it. So good luck, Greg. Next is, uh, is another old business, and we have Newport Utilities, Brad Davidson. And Brady, I'll, I'll let you. I put this on there. Uh, I had requested that him pass, uh, send us something that tells us we had a little discussion on whether Brad Davis was still held before the people you tell these board and they sent us back a reply and uh, Terry, Terry has broke it down kind of in what we can understand so he's going to read what yes uh, all of them Greg uh, Sid Hensley who is the uh, senior law consultant with MTAS uh, sent us a four-page letter outlining his his opinion and of course understand it's only uh, his opinion but he, he, in this letter he states out what he considers to be what the city charter says and how that can be interpreted through what the Tennessee law provides and what Tennessee uh, case law and other case law would provide and gives his opinion on on the situation. Uh, we'll be glad to make a copy of that letter to anyone who, who desires it. I've already provided a copy to Mr. Davidson. But basically, the, the letter in shorthand form uh, is broken down to, to, to state that the question is, did Mr. Davidson forfeit the office he was elected to when he sold his property in the, in the city. And, and the, uh, Mr. Hensley says that it's clear to him, at least, and to me too, that you have to be a qualified voter, number one, to be appointed to the, uh, to the board of the Newport Utilities. And, and the next question you got to reach, he says, is, is that a continuing requirement? Well, the problem with that is the Charter doesn't say whether it's a continuing requirement or not. So therefore, the, the Charter does not automatically require that Mr. Davison forfeit his office. Uh, he goes on to state that the city could have declared the office vacant when Mr. Davison sold his property, but there was no requirement that the city do that, that it basically had discretion uh, as to whether to declare the office vacant. Of course, the city did not declare the office vacant. And, and he says that he doesn't think the city did anything wrong by not doing anything, uh, but because it did not declare the office vacant, then the question comes up, uh, is the office vacant by, uh, by Mr. Davison selling the property? And in his opinion, his final conclusion is 
that it would require legal action by the city at this point to declare the office vacant, and especially in light of the fact that Mr. Davison has reacquired property in the city, and based upon that would be a qualified voter at this point in time, that it would not be feasible based on the length of term left on the office at the present time since the office expires in 2012, that he doesn't think that legal action would be in the city's best interest, I guess it would be how we could put it. He further states, though, that to clear up the issue and any further action that the city might consider changing the charter so that it would be very clear. I know that's not real clear, but that's about the best I can do. Is that all? Yes, sir. Okay. On the new business, we have consideration of the second reading of ordinance number 201-02, modification of Newport Board of Education policy. That was what we had to pull the hearing on. Do I have a motion to approve this? I make a motion. Do I have a second? I second. And just for the record, the vice mayor did, I think, state the heading of the ordinance so that that is in the record. It is ordinance 2011-01, City of Newport, Tennessee, an ordinance modifying the Newport Board of Education policy. Thank you, sir. Okay. All those say aye. Aye. All those say aye. Okay. Consideration of the first reading of ordinance number 2011-03, budget amendment for capital outlay note. This is consideration of reading ordinance. Do I have a motion to accept this? I make a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Roll call, please. Alderman John Burnett? Yes. Vice Mayor Bill Cosler? Yes. Alderman Ted Burnett? Yes. Alderman Kim Walker? Yes. Alderman Kim Walker? Yes. And, of course, we need to set that for public hearing since it is an ordinance. That's an ordinance. And that means it's next time. Okay, C. We have consideration of resolution number 2011-06 for solid waste transfer station cost overrun loan. I have a motion to set this. Scott, explain that a little. This is where on the sanitation transfer station, the loan and grant combination of $245,000 and $50,000 was not sufficient once the bids came in. So we went back to rural development and it came up to where they could provide an additional $195,000 in loan funds, additional $40,000 in grant funds to be able to award the bid and construct the sanitation transfer station. I have a motion to accept that. You make a motion. I have a second. I'll second. I'll second. Okay. Roll call. Alderman Kim Morgan. Yes. Alderman Kathy Hart. Yes. 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 Okay, the Tanner Cultural Center Management Proposal. Thank you. Ms. Um, As requested at the last workshop, um, I did work up a um, management agreement. Did you all have that? Took that to Mr. Hurst and tweaked it a little bit. Uh-huh. And of course, it's open to the corrections or changes that you may want. Do 
Yes, sir. I, uh, Scott Curry brought by the office and I, I did review it. Okay. Anybody, anybody got any more questions for Mr. Ms. Dolphin? I think they were a mistake made on when we had the uh, discussion the last time. Scott said there were three hundred dollars paid. There were more than that after I after I found out that there are some more people up there that are paying. And not that a lot, but they are paying. That's good. So, I mean, I'm for this, uh, Shadeen. I'm, I'm all for somebody to take control, of, not take control, but manage it. You know, that's all I have to say. I, I just want to let the people know that there were more than $300 paid on that last month. It might have been put somewhere else, but anyway, I know it was paid. <coughs> that's good. Okay. Anybody else have any more questions? Let's talk about her proposal. How much money was generated, Scott? Uh, through the through April thirtieth, through right to this point right now, uh, six thousand four hundred five dollars has been collected. The three hundred dollars that we Alderman Bugs was referring to was simply that month of February's receipts only. Totally, the alderman is correct. It's over uh, six thousand four hundred five dollars, and that's been since July the first. July one, yes, sir. And last year. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that all you? So they can go. Anybody else got any more questions? I, do, I have no question. The classes that were being held at the Tanner Building, who, who's over the Tanner Building, first of all? Yes, it is. The city's over the Tanner Building. The classes, the dance classes or the exercise classes being held up there, um, are the people being charged for that? I can refer to that. Yes, there is. They are. Um, we are assisting and due to the fact that our funding, the Senior Center, uh, funding comes from the Over American Act, and uh, our funding stipulates that uh, funding should be used only for seniors 60 and older. We do not discriminate uh, anybody participating in our activities. So to get to say compliance without our funding, uh, we assess the minimum fee of a dollar for anyone that wants to participate in those activities. Anyone younger than 60. Okay. So anybody younger than 60 pays a dollar to join the class. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the instructor? Uh, I give them the option if they want to pay. Um, you know, they, they choose to. Um, so that was all. Um, what do the, those funds go back to your department? It goes back to, it goes into our general fund. We use those monies to buy toilet paper, uh, buy any supplies that we need. We give prizes away, bingo, uh, those kinds of things. We have to buy paper goods and things like that when we have uh, activities. So, so we have a, uh, you, you have a proposal in that too? We have, I do have a proposal. Okay, this is not going to let them, this doctor stay no. down. Okay. We have a proposal that was already presented to the city council, uh, the former council, a year ago. Um, I still think it is valuable. I do have to tell you that today, uh, this afternoon, I got a call from um, East Tennessee Human Resource Agency, Gary Holloway, who is the executive director for the art agency, whom I work for, and he uh, asked me not to get into any discussions with this council about leases or rent or anything like that. So I'm just, I do have this proposal, which was, as I said, presented last year uh, when this issue came up uh, uh, months before. How many organizations are up there? Anybody have any Eight. Eight. <coughs> well, actually, seven. Yeah.
I'm sorry I'm not being rude, but how does he expect you all to be able to use the building without any kind of proposal? That's city property. Uh, again, we have to talk to other managers about that. So we need me and Ms. Hope. We need a window. Well, I was going to say, I do have the proposal for that we presented last uh, uh, February, I think. And I, I do think it's valuable. But as far as me getting into the discussion uh, with you about that, I'm told not to. I am an employee. Terry, I have a question. Can we legally hire a property management company? Oh, yes. Do they have to be a licensed company? Any of these people have to be licensed in property management? Or? Well, this is a no. no I think we, can, we can enter into contracts with people, and of course, we can enter into a contract with a non profit organization, which you represent. I assume we could enter into a contract with, I, I'm not sure what this proposal is. It's been, too many days since I've seen this. I wish I was not going to go with this proposal. I don't have a little something. Unless somebody has a motion, I'm sure it would be the logical thing. So we need, this is my purpose, we need to turn this over to the workshop and then to go with the proposal. I'd like to I'd like to have a workshop with all the people that are the actual members of these organizations up there, have them all. Try to get them all together at one time. Well, I really don't, to be honest with you, I've been up here going on five years and I have no idea who's up there. She got a question. Okay. Stay up now. Which is upstairs, and our two organizations do pay rent to uh, the city for our space. Um, in addition to that, uh, we have a very good working relationship with all the agencies in the building, and uh, we we all try to be self-sufficient as far as, like Carlene said, providing our own uh, toiletries, our paper goods, and those things for all the people in our county that visit for our services. And uh, 2010 physical year, we had over 4,000 households that used our services uh, for electric bills, rent, mortgage, food, pantry, get donations, and those sort of things also. But uh, as far as actually wanting to put a proposal, any other time we probably would have, but due to the budget cuts and we're not sure just yet how our funding is going to be. Um, we would like to remain neutral on that, but as, as well, we would like to have some kind of committee form so that all the agencies could just maybe uh, make suggestions or work together with the city to do whatever we need to keep the building up and to keep the building space for our community. Give me your, give me your again, your organization. Uh, that is Cherokee Economic Authority. I'm the neighborhood center. And then we have the Cherokee uh, Head Start, which is upstairs. And under our proposal, we did have, we do have in our proposal, the original proposal, not the management agreement, that we will form a tenant board with all of the organizations up there in good standing, those that are paying rent, will have representation on the tenant board to address any concerns of the building with the city and the Tenant Community Action Initiative. Uh, what do you think when they do just turn this over to you? Need to they screw or what board players are here to discuss this or how we going to handle it? Um, Mayor, Mayor Ball did not uh, put forth the recommendation. He said he'd like to see more information and hear from all parties involved, all the tenants involved, and perhaps have a town hall meeting with everybody involved. But, uh, you know, it's the board's will. That's what the mayor asked for? Yes. Okay. 
explain that, please? Yes. Um, I would like to know how many other buildings the city has that um, have been um, given out to other property management. So we might give out to anybody in property management yet. So what, what, we're, what we're looking for is we're, we're trying to get the uh, people left out of it's not planned to pay. I mean, you know, last, the last time we had a meeting here, Scott Collins said they were, how, how much was collected? He said $300. I said, how much did we pay out? We paid out $1,800. It don't take a scientist to figure that out. It don't take a scientist to figure you're paying out more than you're taking in. And that's what we want. We want to talk to you. The city wants to talk to you. We're not trying to run you off. We just want our share. If we pay a electric bill, we want you. We want some money for that. We, I can't. You boy, you tell the board. If I don't pay my light bill, better they'll come down and I'm on the board. They'll turn mine off. I ain't no better than anybody else. The lady that just stood up, did she own a? She has an organization there too. No, I'm on the senior advisory board. Okay. Well, we we'll ought to have a workshop and get all of them together and talk about this. So just, just about that. How do we need a document? Um, my question is, it's not the world. It's not the city. Why do we need a document? We might not. I've been like 20 years. Maybe we just, I believe what this board was Linda, concerned with. Go ahead. Linda, tell them the organization you're with, please. I work at East Tennessee State University through the Families First Program. I've been doing it for 14 years now. And you do a good job, too. I do a very good job. You do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not I'm local to but I, when I do, I do good. And this is one thing that I do is good. But I don't understand why this was revisiting this management thing again. It seems to be working. And I mean, I mean, if we, have, if we do turn over to management, has a written agreement that we renew every year and they pay their fair share. So then you done that one talking. The, uh, I think some of the organizations just don't have those in place. Is there anybody in the building that is not paying? I think there's some, yes. There must be. Come on, they get $300. Pat, you, your group is $300. I think Pat said you have a written agreement as well. That was charity. That's also that the lady could meet or not with it. But I do have our written memorandum of understanding. Plus, we furnish all of our overhead bulbs changing. We've redone the floors. Every springtime, we hire somebody to rub the floors in the downstairs area, we relax them, paint, we try to keep it up to look at nice. Do you have a written agreement with the city? Yes. We have one too. We might have Mr. Hayes, Mr. Hayes. Well, some, some doesn't. Well, that's fine. Yeah, we're going to go for 10,000 eight, but it is for you. Every day there's a can I make the recommendation that we put this on the agenda for the workshop? I'll second that. Uh, 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 it's going to be in the workshop. And thank you all ladies for showing this to us because some of us have been here and we long they didn't know here and we're new. We don't know. But like I said, we've, we've got a report $1,800 a month going out and we're just getting 300 which was missing. And just to, just to clear that while the Tanner Community Action Initiative is wanting to manage the building is that we have, a, a, since 1998, when we had the whole issue with the building quality and everything, it's the Tanner Community Action Initiative that was at the forefront of working and saving the building and everything and we've done that three times since and we do want 
to utilize the building. We don't want to put anybody out. If, if you're paying the rent, you have no problems. We just want everybody to pay their rent so the, so the city will get their money, so the, the city will continue to work and repair the building, and that the building will be opened up to the community like it needs to be, not just the Jones Hill community, but the whole Newport community as a whole, and that everybody will be able to utilize that building. Let me let me ask a question. The organizations that are up there, can you all get word to each other somehow that we're going to have this workshop so we can get a representative from each organization to come to that workshop, please? Scott, what's the date and time of the next workshop? It would be the uh, first Tuesday in May. And I'm thinking it's May 5th, but I don't know. Hey, no. Could, May 3rd. May 3rd. Could the city send a formal invitation to all the tenants up there so that they have representation at that meeting? And can you, you made a good example of the door with the company candidate. And I'm sure what's going on. I was there today. I know some of the others I've never seen there. Okay. We won't make a motion to turn this over to the workshop. We made third. So it's 5 30. I believe that's what we have. And, but y'all will be contacted. We'll be here. Y'all, they'll send y'all a the letter, probably. Everybody up there. Try to stop. You're sure that we'll get personal contact. Okay. Sure that everybody is okay. Okay, the next agenda is the roadblocks. I'd just like to lump all three together. The first one is the Top County High School Boys Soccer Team, which is done Paddock this past weekend. And that is Luna Check Softball Team and All Time Association. And I'd like to have a motion of approval if there's no questions. If there's any questions. I found a motion to accept all three of these. I'm going to make a motion to accept them because the land and chicks have felt entitled to this book. They have felt this in your past. Second. Okay, and uh, all time association. Motion of the motion to give them all. You see the motion? Oh, yeah, they're all over. Okay. 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 All favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. And all those vote. But before we go further, I got uh, several members of the 2011, 2011 Class of Leadership of Cock County and Tenants. And I would like uh, those intense please to stand up and be recognized. I give you your name if you want to. The future leaders of, of Cock County. Okay. 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 Well, thank you. That's our leadership of Doc County. Okay, next bids, purchase expenses, and dump truck bids. And this is the river walk. Oh, you do the river walk. Sorry, Mr. Bro uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as we discussed when the motion was made to suspend the rules, PDOT has determined there was only one responsive bid for the Riverwalk Greenway project. And for the record, it's Newport Riverwalk Trail Phase 1, Beaver Bad Sexton Greenway. Project number 34272-00. The only responsive bid was from Brockwell Construction in the amount of base bid $283,245 with alternate one in the amount of $3,792 for a total bid package of $287,037 and this is within the budget parameters. I have a motion to set that. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Okay, have a roll call. I'll leave money off. Are we going to go? Yes. Can I say Yes. Are we going to go? 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 Yes. Are we
Can I move that, sir, Stokely, Miss Tennessee, pass and add up? You got the amount on that? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the add amounts uh, are for a full page $300, half page $150, quarter page $75. Uh, Mayor Ball asked me to share with uh, the board that uh, Jefferson City took out one in the amount of $150 because Miss Stokely had won the Northeast region and now she is going on to the state competition. And the mayor recommended a full page ad in the amount of three hundred dollars because she's a Newport representative and will be carrying the Newport name to Nashville to compete for Miss Tennessee and possibly from there to Miss America. I, I, I want to say congratulations to her first, but and, and tell Connie thanks for sending that to us. I'm just messing. And <laughs> yes, we've got a standing agreement. Yes. That we only do fifty dollars on any of this stuff. I mean, it's a great opportunity for her, and congratulations. But I'll make the motion that we do something about fifty dollars, and if the council wants to kick in twenty-five dollars, five a piece or something, make seventy-five up. That'll be fine. But I, I'm, I'll make the motion for the fifty dollars coming out of the city general fund or whatever fund that is. I'm going to say that motion and I'll give her $10 myself. <laughs> Stop. Can I count that as my $5? <laughs> <laughs> Have we got no, okay. uh, Miss Lane Spoon, we can pull a little after. I think the rep said the town needs to uh, That's approved. So it will help her on a scholarship, what I read. She gets a little more on her scholarship with the town Newport uh, by a page. It will help her on a scholarship, and I think. The left town like Newport, they might help us get our name out. Uh, so the only fund we have is the public relations fund, and you all have control of it. You, you, you make the motion what to spend out of it. My, my motion stands for you. Uh, that's fine. Okay, no problem. But I, well, we just, I can give them money too, but I just took time to get it. Was it $300 is what we need? Because so we do that for the motion? The motion. The last. Council made a motion that we wouldn't spend no more than fifty dollars on these because we kept having them come for us. And that's where Kenny stands now. Okay, but he's got a motion. We got a second. Okay, we'll vote on that and we'll come up. Uh, I'll put all the river twenty dollars. <laughs> 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 Somebody, come on, come on. Come on, Who is it? I'll let you. Well, all right, Johnny, you called us out. I'll give 20. Well, I'll give 20. I said the most money on the 50. Okay, most on 50. And we'll save it. Let's vote. Okay. Now, Mayor, I'm going to make a motion that we do this for the county of Newport. Okay. 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 Scott, I'm gonna give you a twenty. Well, we'll give you some money now, Scott. We'll try. We'll try to come up with that three hundred dollars. Connie can finish it up. Tell her he can finish it. We let the sense of here tonight. Well, we let him finish up. Okay. Scott, I will give you a hundred dollars on it. That's real nice. Okay, next is the bid purchase expenses, and we got a dump truck bid. We got three bids on it, and uh, Scott, you need to read them all. Uh, the three bids uh, are in your notebooks, and uh, the base bids on all of them uh, are listed seventy nine thousand seven forty three from Landmark International, from Moss Motor Company eighty two thousand eight fifty one with additions. Then Smoky Mountain Truck Center is seventy six thousand nine hundred and forty three. <coughs> and uh, Auto Woman Hope had asked me to check if there was a state contract uh, bid price. And contacted them past and they was unsure of it. 
So uh, we followed up and spoke with Bill Davis of the State of Tennessee Department of General Services. And at this time, the state does not have a bid, state contract bid price for dump trucks. They're working on it, but it does not help us now. All right. Also, Moss Motors had a second bid, an alternate bid. And that bid was 77342 and it's not in the book as I was told it would be. Yes, ma'am. It's 77342 And then when you add the alternate bid, like I announced, it brings it up to 8817. But it's that right is on page five. In, in, right here, I'm looking at the book and stuff at the 82851. Stop what's added on that. On the alternate bid for Moss Motor Company, mm -hmm. they've added air brakes, air dryer with heater, 23,000 pound single speed axle. Mm -hmm. 31,000 pound multi-leaf barrel rate rear suspension. It's multiple use trucks. I have a motion. A motion set down with bids. I'd like to make the motion to go with Miles. A motion on the table for a Miles trucking company. Is that the bid that's published in here, not the alternate? Is it the 77 or the 80 now? Which one are you? 77. Well, it's 77,342 dollars. Say it again, Scott, one more time. 77,342 dollars. Okay. Is that the one that's a state bought from? Yes, it is. And he assured me that this is what their town uses whenever they do their work for their city. I have spoken with Dale at Moss Motor. I'll second the motion. Any other? Any other motion? Okay. Roll call. <coughs> Yes. 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 Any comments from the citizens? Anybody here would like to speak? And motion to adjourn. Motion. Second.